Hello everybody and uh, welcome to friends and family. Um, this has been an odd week in this household because we've been self-isolating as a member of our family has Covid. Um, isolation is soon up and uh, she's getting better. Strange times as I'm speaking. I can see my neighbour next door but two running up and down his garden. So perhaps they're self-isolating. This is his exercise. He's running backwards and forwards. We managed to get out in the garden yesterday afternoon for our bit of exercise, which was great. I just need to get out of the house now and have a good long walk. Anyway, enough of that. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been coming across references in the Bible to uh, blind eyes, deaf ears and hardened hearts. There's numerous scriptural references for this, that we've got eyes to see and ears to hear but, um, and, and hearts to feel, but we're hardened. That doesn't sound very encouraging at first glance, does it? And uh, I was thinking, oh, goodness me, how's this going to be encouraging? But um, I'm going to read to you from John 12, and now I can't find my glasses. Hello, back in the room, found them. Um, so, John 12, verse 37 to 40. Even with the overwhelming evidence of all the many signs and wonders that Jesus had performed in front of them, his critics still refused to believe. This fulfilled the prophecy given by Isaiah. Lord, who has believed our message? Who has seen the unveiling of your great power? And the people were not able to believe, for Isaiah also prophesied, God has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts to the truth. So with their eyes and hearts closed, they cannot understand the truth, nor turn to me, so that I could instantly cleanse and heal them. I'm going to read also from Isaiah 6, verse 10. God said to Isaiah, Go and tell these people, be ever hearing but never understanding, be ever seeing but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused, make their ears dull and close with their eyes, and close their eyes, sorry. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Hmm. Okay, so just a side note, I want to explain why the Passion Translation has um, cleanse and heal, not just heal and why it has instantly, and other versions don't have this. So there's a note here on verse 40, and it says here, the Aramaic is translated cleansed, and the, he the Greek is translated healed. So both are included here. So that's fair enough to me. The Aramaic is translated cleansed, and the Greek is translated healed. Both are included here. And it also said, I will, instantly cleanse and heal them and it was the word instantly that that jumped out at me when I read this first and so I checked in my other versions I've got um, just you know for checks and balances and things and instantly wasn't there so <laughs> it's not my day today I've just dropped my glasses now um, instantly wasn't there so I thought I'm gonna have a look at this so um, I did actually rope in John as well to help um, so the instantly here, it's not, the Hebrew is, isn't as straightforward as us English speakers. And it's a sort of past tense. It's aerist for heal. And it's sort of a past tense, but it's already been done. So this past tense seems to mean as soon as you turn, it's done. Like it's past tense. It was done before. So therefore it's instantly, it's a done deal. I hope that makes sense. But um, I feel that the instantly, taking all that into account, should be there. So that's the bit that jumped out to me, actually, as I said, the instantly turn, and I will instantly cleanse and heal you. So we may have blind eyes and uh, deaf ears and hardened hearts, but if we turn to Jesus, sorted. It sounds easy, it sounds simple. But we have to realise it's not through our works or striving. So we don't even have to work ourselves up to find it easy. <laughs> um, it's through Jesus and what he has done. 
a simple acceptance and turning is enough. And who are we to argue? Who are we to argue with that? It's a done deal. We've got to work it out in our lives. And, and that is the ongoing uh, process through all our lives. We have to work it out step by step with God. But the actual fact that we are cleansed instantly has, has been done. Because Jesus did it all. And if we try and say, well, actually, no, I've got to do this, this and this. It's almost like saying, um, no, Jesus, what you've done is not enough. Because I've got to do this, this and this. So there you go. A simple turning, the instantly, and it's a done deal. But um, there's this bit that God hardens hearts. He blinds ears. He makes the... Um, blinds ears, he blinds eyes and makes the ears deaf and at first glance it may seem that this is what this verse is saying I mean Isaiah, God has said I will harden the heart um, so what chance have we got is it all a bit random look at Pharaoh it says God hardened his heart so he would not let the people go so he thinks, hmm, that's a bit unfair what chance do we have but we have to know the nature of God and we know that our God is a God of justice so he wouldn't be unfair so how does that fit in again we're looking at things from the Hebrew mindset that um, God is overall the Hebrew mindset says that God is overall and quite right too he is this is the Hebrew way of putting things so Pharaoh was not a follower of God his heart was already hard and he wasn't open to the Lord at all. There's that magic word, isn't there? Free will. God, God lets let him go that way as he gives all people free will. In Pharaoh's case, he had many chances to turn to God. God gave him many chances. He could turn to God and find himself cleansed and do what was being requested of him. But he refused to do it. He had the free will. He had the choice his heart was already hard and I feel that it can be like a slippery slope aren't it you, you start with one thing I think I've said this before it's like if you're on a diet and going past a cake shop I'm not going to look in the window or I might just have a quick look in the window or I might choose a cake I would like to eat but I'm not going to eat it oh I think I'll just go into the shop and so it goes on and then before you know you've got a lovely jam donut there or whatever and um, you tuck it in. So <laughs> it can be a slippery slope. I remember our dog actually, we used to try and give her a bit of toast or something and she'd look like, oh, I really want that bit of toast. Anyway, I digress. She always got it in the end. Um, so there's a warning and a challenge for us then. Let's not become satisfied with what we've got or even too scared to move on. Because we can be comfortable, we can be, I mean, isolation could be, not isolation, but just sitting in our homes could be comfortable. So when it's time to move out and meet people again, that could seem very daunting. It might be comfortable. And then in a way we have an excuse, obviously, valid excuse, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, because of the situation we're in at the moment. But when things are freed up, that could be quite daunting. But we have to give ourselves a challenge to keep our hearts open, our eyes open, our ears open to what God wants for us. Let's be hungry for more, more of him, more of his presence, more of a revelation from him. He always gives us that choice to go deeper. We're not coerced into anything. Um, but on the way, let's not get hard, blind or deaf. And it's an interesting point. When I was working in a school with uh, British Sign Language, I had uh, the chance to go on a course um, to learn how to communicate with people who are both blind and deaf. So this involves learning the alphabet on, on the hand, the British Sign Language alphabet, directly on the hand, and also hands-on signing, which is an adapted version of British Sign Language where the deaf-blind person feels what's being signed by placing their hand on top of the signer's hand. It was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. 
Um, as part of the course, we had to become deaf blind. So the instructors gave us blindfolds and noise cancelling headphones. And they explained that we would sit exactly where we were, not move, and someone would come and grab us and pull us to somewhere else and just leave us standing there. And we were completely unseeing and unhearing. I've never known such uh, sen sensory deprivation, really. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything at all. Just sat there in this darkness waiting for someone to come and grab me. Which they did. They grabbed me, pulled me along and left me standing somewhere. I had no idea where I was. All I could hear was my heartbeat, which was getting faster, 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 faster. It was really disconcerting. Um, it left me with a greater understanding of how to react towards people with these issues. But you, it's just so scary. You, you have to approach people in a, a totally different way to probably what we're used to. Um, anyway, um, but if we're deaf and blind to God, we could be in such a position of not having a clue as to ended up where we are. A sort of, oh, where did that happen moment? Because we haven't been listening to him, we haven't been hearing to him. A bit like the prodigal son, really. He <clears throat> um, did what he wanted, and I think he came out of it thinking, where did that happen? How did I get here? How did I get to cleaning out the pigsty? What's happened to me? But he turned, he turned and was instantly healed. Um, at the end of the session of the, the training course, I could take the blindfold off and the headphones off and everything was restored. That was such a relief. But it's the same here. We can take our blindfolds off, take our headphones off, open up our hearts and um, we can turn to him and instantly we are restored, just like the prodigal son was in that parable. So as we're seeing, hearing God, experiencing him, we all um, experience this differently. It can be related to our learning style. If we're audio learners, we might prefer to hear him better through what we hear. We might enjoy listening to podcasts. We'll hear him speak. Um, we might, you know, we hear God inwardly, even rarely, unfortunately, um, it's rare. You could hear an audible voice. If we're visual learners, God may speak to us through what we see, what we experience through our daily living. And the objects around us, kinesthetic leaders, uh, leaders, learners, sorry, um, may need to go out for a walk and do something to hear and speak. That's fine. There's no right or wrong way. We are all unique. We are all individual. And God can speak to us however he chooses. He can surprise us and speak to us in a completely different way to what we've experienced before. So remain open and expectant for him to speak. I mean, I've heard God in many different ways. I've had in, uh, impressions, sort of like inside. And sometimes when something's not right, it's like a all swirling thing. But um, reading the Bible, reading this word, like, you know, this word instantly to jump out. Um, someone's given me prophetic words. I had a conversation with him internally, all different ways. Um, and I want to hear him more. So let's all remain hungry to hear him. We have a lot of um, different things coming up. How are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? We all need to listen to him. Um, what's God saying? I mean, Acts 2, great. Love God. Love others. Let's um, have that as our forefront, really. Love God. Love others. They were devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, friendship, you know, breaking of bread, prayer. Let's worship him. Let's pray together. Let's just be as basic as that and join together, um, loving God and loving people. And then we'll see what he does. But what is God saying individually to us? What is he saying corporately? He is speaking about not going back to the old way of doing things. Sometimes it's hard to be patient and uh, you feel that pressure to, to come up with something. Um, 
but we have to wait for God to reveal things step by step. In 1 Samuel 13, verse 7 to 14, Samuel rushed ahead with the sacrifice. No, Saul rushed ahead with the sacrifice. It must be being locked down. I'm getting everything back to front. Um, Saul rushed ahead with the sacrifice. Samuel told him to wait. He didn't. He panicked. He saw his men beginning to scatter. Ah, oh, they're going, they're going here, they're going there. Oh no, what am I going to do? I must do something. And Samuel wasn't arriving and uh, it was just scary. So he panicked and he started to sacrifice. He had his excuses, but it wasn't right. Um, he should have done what he was told and let's wait. Wait patiently for Samuel to turn up. And things then for Saul would have been very different. <clears throat> So we need to wait with our eyes and ears open for just the right time for us. It will be different for every church. We cannot look at others, but God can be trusted. Um, we can be teachable, open, our hearts open to God, and he will answer. We need discernment. We need to weigh things. We need to, uh, like prophecies, we need to weigh them in the light of the Bible and with each other. That's again the checks and balances and God has put them all there that we need. So none of us can go shooting off on this way or shooting off on that way. Um, we need to share with each other, respect each other, talk together as much as we can, Zoom, um, and just have these checks and balances in place. For God will speak and we all need each other. I mean, someone else might hear something um, that I don't hear. But it's really important and it's really right. So please share it. Share it with us. Um, share it with, you know, um, your home group leaders as well. Let's let's bring it all um, together and out. And not get offended if it's not right, but it may be just what we need. Um, Lynn shared a photo with our small group of a heart-shaped stone that she'd found in some hard earth. And it was like a gift from God to her and Flavia added and, and said for God so loved the world yeah for God so loved the world he breaks through into our hard hearts we can turn with our eyes and ears and hearts be open to him and find ourselves instantly cleansed and healed the past will be made smooth he will remove the obstacles in our life because he wants that relationship with us so much that he was willing to die for us. Jesus was willing to go to the cross and um, be that sacrifice to tear the veil and give us that openness. We just need to turn and be healed and um, trust him that he can do it. So. God bless you all. Hopefully again, prayerfully, we'll see you soon. Let's all um, keep in touch with each other. And uh, yeah, we will get together soon. So God bless you all. Bye.